Hey, what's up? I'm Benjamin Gottlieb, and you are watching Shopify On Location, coming to you from New York City. You know, New York is really one of the fashion capitals of the world, and so perhaps it's no surprise that trends start here. One trend that Alex Drexler came up with was designing the perfect shirt and doing so by focusing on quality. Alex is here today. He is the founder of Alex Mill. Also here with me is his CEO, Roxanne Stahl. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. You're so welcome. This business that you have really does something that's interesting in my opinion. It's not necessarily about making a new type of clothing, but making the best in an established lane. Where did this idea come from, Alex? Well, the whole business sort of started with this idea that despite all the shirts out there, I still couldn't find the perfect shirt. You know, perfect shirt with the right details, the right finish, the right fabric. You know, there's so many choices out there, but we really wanted to find the perfect shirt and it didn't exist. So we started, we made one. Just, we couldn't find what we wanted, so we just made one. I mean, is there anything more New York than that? <laughs> No, I mean, I think like in New York, the, you, you know, your overload of sensories, everything going on and so many choices and stuff. So we did it. You just did it and you found this opportunity. And again, something you mentioned, a saturated market. Right. There is a lot of options out there for, yeah. for button downs. Right. In your estimation, though, what makes specifically the perfect shirt? Well, several things. I think one, sometimes it's all about the little details that you don't even notice like the size of the placket, the collar, the buttons, how they feel. You know, I, I always loved a button that was a bit weighty. You know what I mean? That didn't feel cheap or plastic. And so that was sort of all these elements. You have this, you're talking about clothing in a way that's almost, it's both utilitarian, but also artistic in a way, right? I mean, the, the, the weight of the button. I mean, that's so specific. Roxanne, I'm curious, uh, is this the type of, conversation that you would have in your experience? You've worked in the fashion mm -hmm. industry for a long time, or is there something unique about this particular brand? I, it's definitely unique. I've seen the places I've worked, you know, the details were always important, but it was never like here we focus on these details are what make these clothes stand out. And, you know, and we still bring that, that intense focus that Alex had in building the perfect shirt, we still bring to the assortment now. Even though the assortment's broader, we do men's and women's. We do a variety of product categories within, but we are always focused on having the perfect sweater, the best work jacket, a jumpsuit that, you know, you can wear literally anywhere into anything. I was a customer before. I was buying our jumpsuits, and I would notice these little details, whether it was our little X logo stitched on the side of the shirt, and it and when other people would notice the, those two, they'd be like, that's so cool. Where'd you get that? And, and you're in a jumpsuit right now. And I'm in a jumpsuit right now because <laughs> it's literally the 15 second outfit and it gets me out the door in time for my train in the morning. Um, so I that that's what we imbue in everything we do. At, at the same time, I really think it's it poses some interesting challenges for marketing, mm -hmm. right? This series here in New York is all about marketing because like in many arenas, New York leads the way when it comes to marketing products. And when you don't have something that stands out necessarily by how it looks visually, you need to use other strategies to make this thing sell. Mm -hmm. To both of you, um, how do you make something sell when it can, at least from initially looking at it, it looks like everything else? That's great. And I think, you know, I would say the team that we have and really the streets in New York. We are based in here in Soho, not far from where we are, um, you know, meeting today. It's a great part of town And too. We, yeah. we shoot our content on the streets. We shoot our editorial shoots. We'll take, whether it's a really, it's a quick, you know, Instagram, something for social, or it's a larger editorial campaign, we'll just go outside and do it. And, you know, obviously we have professionals to help us, but New York's our best backdrop. And then in that also, we use the team that whether it's a, you know, a, you know, production, um, manager or one of our designers or our social media coordinator, they're wearing our clothes, they're in our content, and they are like really the best representation of who Alex Mill is. And I think that resonates with a lot of people. They want to see, you know, you know, people they can relate to wearing these clothes. And th that makes our clothes relatable. Our environment influences a lot of what we do. Mm -hmm. um, and it's clear that the city, Alex, really has influenced your design for your clothing. Um, how do you look at something, say, a building or a neighborhood, and distill that into a piece of clothing? Well, it's, it's interesting because I think, like, some companies, they get inspired by like a trip to Italy or a, you know, a trip to somewhere in Europe. But for us, 
our inspiration, our vibe is really from New York City. So I think like when you look at build, you can see such beautiful details in New York from the color of the buildings to just walking down the street for me in New York is really truly an inspiration. So I think like once I'm absorbed and be, being part of New York and seeing that it, it helps sort of helps with the color, the detail, it gives you a vibe into the clothing. Is this the kind of place where if I'm looking to start a business or I've got a nascent business, I should move here? And if so, why? Anything can happen here. because you, And because to the, the point Alex made, you can take inspiration from, you know, anything outside, you know, around you and any part of the city, literally. But you also have access to some of the best kind of talent and also people to give advice. Um, what I have found so interesting is that just networking, you know, asking people to be put in touch with someone who can, you know, tell me about, you know, whether it's a place to produce denim or it's, you know, an introduction to someone who can give advice on, you know, what kind of marketing strategies aren't there that we might not be aware of. Um, just using that is so powerful and can really help you build a team no matter what size you want it to be. So using not just the aesthetics of the, of the yeah. city, but also, the as you mentioned, the expertise of the city. Exactly, yes. Um, and, and when it, it specifically for marketing though, um, when you, Alex, maybe I'll ask you this, when you brought this idea up to folks that helped you sell this, sell you, not just your first perfect shirt, but also all the subsequent products, what was the strategy that you all employed to kind of, again, get this item that might look like the shirt you could find off the rack at Macy's or Nordstrom's, but really is better, really is a higher quality, but on the surface level, it's tough to tell. Well, the strategy we started with was really wholesale. So at the time, you know, there were like, there's Barney's New York, which was an iconic department store and Barney's, a lot of small, small specialty retailers like in LA, Ron Herman, Fred Siegel. And so we really started by selling to get the word out through some of these wholesalers. So we used to have a, our original offices was, in, was on Broadway right near Chinatown. They used to come to the office and you know, we'd show them the product and they might buy like six shirts here, eight shirts there, you know, small orders. But I feel like once we got their endorsement, these people who were like, really they, like the owner of Ron Herman, Ron Herman, he really knows the market and saying, okay, I want this product in my store. Then people really started to, you know, say, oh, well, that's a cool store. That's cool. That's at Barney's. And they really then, it sort of gave it a nice endorsement. It's at Barney's. It must be cool. Exactly. Right. You have exactly. the Barney's stamp of approval on your on your products. Right. Right. So we were really using these sort of. We really approached it with a grassroots way, where it was, you know, these different wholesalers. And I remember at the time we didn't even have a website up. You know, there was no Instagram. We didn't have a website. We just sort of grassroots got it out there. In many ways, it's so old school, right? But at the same time, these are things we hear over and over and over again when we're talking with successful brands and companies is that literally showing up in a place and saying, here is my stuff. Do you like it? an established place that works? But Roxanne, given your experience, um, is that the path that folks should take today if they're trying to start a clothing business? I think it depends a lot on the brand and what they're trying to achieve. Um, I do still feel, you know, word of mouth is an excellent communication strategy, you know, whether it could be done in a variety of different ways, whether it's through wholesalers or getting, you know, word word out, you know, in social channels, et cetera. I think, um, you know, getting word out and getting validity um, and getting, you know, people to say, oh, yeah, this this product, whatever it may be, is real, is legit, is great. Um, you know, people kind of trust the opinions of, you know, people they hear things from more than like, you know, it's that's better than being sold to, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Is wholesale something that if I want to start a clothing company, should I even try to wholesale anymore? Yeah, I think in in the right way. I, d d definitely the wholesale landscape has changed significantly, you know, in the department store universe um, with the big box stores of the world. I still think it's a very valid way of getting the word out. And I believe people kind of they want to discover things and they want to have it. They want to be told about something from so someone's the opinion they trust. And if whether it's a local store, a lo local boutique that they either know the owner, they shop there regularly and they see something new and they're like, oh, I trust that you brought this in your store. I can trust this brand. I think that's a, as good as seeing it in a larger location. It just what makes sense for I think what makes sense for the brand itself. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Alex? Do you agree? I agree. I feel like one of the, the things that I'm most proud of is our connection with our customers. 
and the community. And I feel like that an endorsement from the community is more important than spending tons of money on a paid ad or something. You know what I mean? I mean, that's still important and there's different elements, but I think that our community, and that's through the wholesalers, through the customers on Instagram, I feel like there's no better endorsement of, the, of that to Roxanne's point. Yeah, your brand essentially has, and I don't use this term lightly, but a cult following. People that mm -hmm. really are evangelists for the brand, they, um, they talk about the brand a lot, whether that's online or to their friends. It's an enviable position. Um, if you were to tell somebody who came to you and said, I want to build a following that you have, how do you start to do that, Alex? Well, first, I think you need a product that people, that resonates totally with people. Yep. Because I think there's some companies I see out there that have, you know, incredible marketing, incredible, you know, noise, but the product isn't very good. It's hollow. So that's why it was all about finding the perfect shirt with the right buttons, the right fabric, the right details, because you wanted a product that can resonate with people. It's interesting. We're, I'm, I'm hearing some other um, types of advice about that. Uh, we had a, a, a previous uh, merchant in here and community building first was the way that they attacked their brand. But it just goes to show you don't have to approach every single business in the same way, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's more about being, I think, authentic, right? You had an authentic, real approach to building something and it paid off. Yeah, definitely. I would say I really believed in making this perfect shirt. You know, I, I said, despite all the shirts out there, I still felt this was the one, you know, I, I, w I went, I really knocked on doors, pavement, you know, going to the different wholesalers. Can you buy this? Can you try it out? And I, I feel like we, in, we ended up creating this sort of special connection with the customer and the community that I feel, you know, it was very genuine. It was very genuine. And since then it's expanded into lots of other types of products. It's not just shirts anymore. We mm -hmm. have the jumpsuits, mm -hmm. all sorts of products for men, for women, for all sorts of people. How do you decide what products to expand in? And if you were telling someone else who's listening, they're looking for an, an investment in something else, how do you pick the right products? Mm -hmm. I think you. I think it's still keeping an intense focus. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of brands can run the risk of trying to be everything to everybody. We still, we keep our, our assortments focused. The clothes all need to work together. We wanna have great items that we're known for, our work jackets, um, as I mentioned, jumpsuits, cotton sweaters, the shirts, um, because you need to be able to compl complete a full outfit. However, if you, you know, if it doesn't all work together, then I think you lose the customer because they don't know what to buy. So we just make sure that, you know, we never lose that line of sight to how it all works together, how you can outfit it, and, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, we our clothes are about like not overthinking it. It should be really easy to get up and get dressed in the morning, whether it's the jumpsuit 15 second outfit or, you know, knowing that something works. And that we just try to make our mantra and imbue in everything we do. I love that because I don't like to think too much when I get ready <laughs> yeah. in the morning. I just right, want right. to toss Especially something. Especially if it's right? early, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, I give me my coffee, let me toss on some jeans and a shirt and mm -hmm. let's go. That's a um, ambitious goal to try to dress someone from head to toe. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all about the uniform, you know, and I think to speak to Roxanne's earlier point, only want to focus on what you can get done because there's so many different paths you can take, but we really wanted to focus on what we call uniforms for individuals because, you know, we want to create the look from head to toe, you know, and, and the words uniform for individuals doesn't necessarily mean that everyone's in the same uniform, but it's what's your personal style. You know, what, 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 what do you want? And that's sort of where we go after is the uniform. Yeah, you go after the uniform. At the same time, if someone's buying a piece of your clothing, uh, for most folks, it's a big investment. I mean, this is not fast fashion that you mm -hmm. just toss away. This is stuff that has quality, it costs money. I would imagine from head to toe, the uniform is aspirational for a lot of shoppers because they can't afford to buy the whole entire outfit. Um, is that part of the strategy though? To have something where, you know, in a month later, I'll buy those pants. Mm -hmm. I definitely, because uh, also our our clothes really are timeless. They they feel of the moment, but they they have a they all have classical elements to them. Whether it's you know navy and white stripes or you know army green pants, those kind of things that you know you see a lot of iterations over the year, but over the years, but ultimately these are kind of mainstays. So we always we never want anything to feel like it's to in a trend that could be gone tomorrow. And we also want it, you know, 
whenever if someone chooses one of our pieces to make sure that can go with anything else they own if it's a kind of um if it's something that represents them it can be easily paired with anything else they might have and they can always add on later in other words you're saying you want something that's timeless not trendy that seems almost antithetical to how the fashion industry works in a way right mm -hmm. where things where you're following trends yes i think like i think a lot of the industry can just want to perpetuate you know you know buying something new every season. And while we certainly like that, would like that from a business <laughs> right. perspective too, we also want our, our clothes to meet people's wardrobes for years to come. Um, and that's why we spend so much time on the quality and the details because we want them to stand the test of time as well. But ideally, love our brand along the way that they want to keep adding as they go. Keep adding as you go. Part of that, of course, to get, convince folks to add things as they go along mm -hmm. is how you market them. I'm just curious, in this new arena where there are so many places that you can advertise, online, social, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, blah, blah, on and on and on, right? How do you decide who to target and how do you decide which folks to engage with to, to sell your products? Well, I think, first of all, we're a startup business, you know, we wish we had the luxury at this point to be able to YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, but we don't. So we have to sort of pick and choose. And I think for us, one of the most successful places has been Instagram for us. Mm -hmm. Instagram has helped us really create a community. So we've really invested a lot in what we can do on Instagram, whether it be paid or organic. It's something that we're constantly working on. That was my next question. My follow-up was going to be, so when it comes to Instagram, are you paying for ads? Are you paying for time? Or are you trying to do more organic work? Or is it a combination of both? Well, we run some paid ads, but we also, we don't pay anyone to wear the clothing, which I think is very important because again, it speaks to the community. You know, the brand has sort of developed a cult following. So we really, we reach out to people who are generally interested in mixing Alex Mill with their personal style and whether or not they have a small number of Instagram followers or a larger number, we, we want to work with everyone. And that's sort of been very successful for us. You've also been mixing not just online, but in store. Mm -hmm. And this is a big part of what we are trying to do here at Shopify, which is this combination of finding your customers where they are. Uh, you have two storefronts, right, here in New York? Correct. Yep. And also you're using our point of sale system. Mm -hmm. Why? What is it about our point of sale system that you like? Really, it's the one source of the truth. And that in, you know, this business is so incredibly valuable. Um, like I remember, you know, I remember 20 years ago and, you know, you're in more antiquated systems and you either had, you would dedicated online inventory versus dedicated store inventory. Now we have one set. Um, our stores can see, you know, real time. In fact, that, that we've rolled out the handheld devices so they can, as they're serve, as they're working with a customer on the floor, they can find if they don't don't have something in stock in that location, they can immediately find it for them and make sure they get it and fulfill that customer's wishes right on the spot. And also having the customer history right at hand is so incredibly valuable so they can refer what size and color a customer might have bought in the past. And it really just helps us um, clientele and work with people and have them come into the store locations more often. For me, it was never a question. Shopify is the best and we only wanna work with the best. And we really, from the very beginning, there was never even a question. What, whatever developers, graphic designers, we all want to work with Shopify because, you know, I feel like there's not very many platforms that can truly amplify your voice and your brand the way Shopify has. So for us, we've been very happy. The best shirt and the best service for your business. Mm -hmm. right. That's important to you. We want to only work with the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd be remiss too, Alex, if I didn't bring up, uh, your family has a well-documented history in the fashion industry. I don't want to run through your your father's um, credentials, but he's founded Old Navy, was a big part of Old Navy, Gap. Um, I could go on and on and on. So you've lived in this world. What is it specifically, outside of just being the best, about Shopify that makes the platform work well for a business like yours. Can you speak to I can even jump yeah, in. Yeah, in please. Yeah. yeah, I would say, you know, we're a small team. We're a small, scrappy team. So anything we use needs to be super simple, especially on the back end. Mm. And that's what, you know, that's what I find is one of the huge benefits is that, you know, it doesn't take a PhD in computer science to <laughs> figure out how to get our products up on our site and sold to our customers. So that 
you know, that in the one, you know, one source of truth and knowing where inventory is are like the two biggest pluses in my mind. So recently you had a new partnership in Japan with a company that's been around for a while. Tell us how that came about and why those types of collaborations are so important. So we recently partnered with a brand called OmniGod, and I had discovered them back a number of years ago when I went to Japan, and they make the most incredible indigo, they make the most incredible denim, and they're really not available in the United States very much. So we, for the last year or so, we've been partnering with them, and we made a small exclusive collection of four or five pieces, a couple jackets, a denim jean, and a shirt. And basically, what's happening is we've been going back and forth and our team and their team, we wanna make sure we're happy with just the product. We just launched it and limited edition. We like to do things in limited edition, you know, cause once it's sell, it's great. Once it sells out, it sells out. You know, once it's gone, it's gone. So we launched it. We let people know over Instagram, Shopify, you know, we put it on our homepage and um, it's been great, very successful. But how do you determine who to work with? I think it's we know we look for collaborators which have which also have a specific point of view, maybe a different point of view than we have, and that we feel like the combination together is more powerful than you know than and a garment may be just done in um, an individual. So in other words, together you're saying you look for a partnership that where when the two powers are combined, yes, it's it's a it's a more influential um, experience. Exactly, and you know, and in these in these partnerships tend to be small run, limited edition. You know, a lot we do a lot of things that are handmade, um, so that our customers know when they're buying them, they're getting something that's one of a kind, and they can't, you know, they likely won't see it everywhere or anywhere else. And a lot of our customers really enjoy that. And they also like the story behind that, like the specific to OmniGod, you know, they might not have heard of this before, but we find that, you know, we will do a page on our platform that explains who the, who the brand is and what they how they started. You know, OmniGod started in 1946 making, making school uniforms. And we find people just want to know that content and understand where this brand that we've chosen to collaborate with comes from. Alex, Roxanne, thank you so much for being here on Shopify on Location. Thank you. Thank you.